Dr. Schultz, what, which men are eligible for Provenge? Like there's so many different types of prostate cancer. So where does the Provenge come in when it comes to sequencing? So Provenge would probably be used a lot more than it is used because it is pretty expensive. So you, your question really addresses is when will insurance pay for it? And uh, the answer to that is men who have uh, at least manifested one metastatic site. So a cancer that spread to a lymph node or a spot on the bone um, are required for people to be eligible to get this medicine. The, in addition to that, men have to have been previously treated with uh, hormone therapy, Lupron, and uh, that hormone treatment has to as have stopped working. So that would mean that someone has a low testosterone and their PSA is creeping up. So if they meet those two criteria, uh, then insurance will pretty much cover Provenge without any arguments. The um, sort of sad thing that I see is that oftentimes Provenge isn't used right at that inflection point uh, when the PSA starts going up in men that are uh, taking Lupron. And for some reason, I don't know whether people forget Provenge or they, they uh, um, I don't know what they're thinking, but uh, you know, people allow the cancer to become very advanced. And when you know the PSA is up around 100, the benefit of trying to go to strengthen the immune system at that point is quite reduced. You know, it may add a few months to your life expectancy. But uh, in the patients who start with lower PSAs, um, we try and start with the PSAs less than five, but in the studies showing that uh, men started with a PSA less than 20, uh, they had 13 months of additional longevity. Uh, so that was a big difference when we start early. And so we're always on the lookout for men that have had at least one metastatic lesion and who are developing a rising PSA when they're on Lupron. So I've read that Provenge does not affect PSA, like it doesn't lower PSA when it comes to getting the treatment. And I've, I've talked to patients who have been a little bit surprised by that. Can you tell me why and kind of talk about why we know it works? Sure, the, the PSA um, probably is, quote, altered. In other words, uh, while PSAs don't typically decline, I have seen them decline from Provenge, but there is something called the PSA doubling time and PSA rate of rise tracks along with how fast the cancer is growing. And the, uh, some studies done by Eric Small up at UCSF showed that in the men that uh, received Provenge that the rate of rise was retarded or slowed down. So the immune system doesn't seem to work, at least with Provenge, so much by eradicating the cancer. What it seems to do is it seems to inhibit the progression of the cancer. And the cool thing about it is that the treatment only takes six weeks to give but once you alter the immune system, the immune system has a memory and it keeps working on an ongoing basis after the treatment is stopped. So this would be another reason to get started earlier. So if someone has a, uh, a predicted life expectancy of a year, gets Provenge and lives a year and a half, uh, he was only exposed to that Provenge for a year and a half. If someone uh, is treated at a much earlier stage where his life expectancy is five years, the immune system will keep working throughout that five-year period, and there'll be an ongoing effect over a longer period of time. Thanks so much for watching. If you would like more information about anything we discussed today, you can go ahead and visit pcri.org. And please subscribe to our channel. It'll give you updates on all sorts of prostate cancer news throughout the week.